Hi everybody, this is Axel. Welcome to my woodwind room and also welcome to my first ever YouTube tutorial slash review video. The reason why I'm doing this is because lately I was asked by a German woodwind and brass magazine to write a tutorial on the topic of how to mic the clarinet. I did that, I did some research, checked out some microphones, did some recordings with them. Uh, went through some of my own clarinet recordings and uh, threw in some of the live and uh, studio experience I gathered over the years. And uh, once the thing was finished, I thought, well, now I have the recordings, I did the research, so why not do this tutorial video uh, in order to help you guys if you're looking for buying a microphone specifically for clarinet or if you're wondering uh, how to mic the clarinet best. So there we are, the clarinet. It is a woodwind instrument like flute, saxophones, oboe, because it has a wooden mouthpiece, in this case at least a wooden reed, which starts to vibrate once you blow the air in. The air goes through the instrument and then you have your fingers moving up and down, opening, closing holes. So a part of the sound will escape the clarinet in the middle of the instrument and the rest will go through all the way to the bottom to the bell where it escapes. So in contrary to trumpets or trombones where the sound is only coming out of the bell, with woodwind instruments we have two sound sources. We have the bell sound and we have the sound coming from where your fingers are. Um, so the question is, is one microphone enough to capture the sound of the clarinet, of a woodwind instrument. If you imagine somebody playing a clarinet in your living room, you're a few feet away from him, you uh, hear the clarinet sound, your ears capture a mixture of the bell and the middle sound coming from the clarinet, mix them together and you might think, wow, why not take only one microphone because it sounds good as I hear it. So is one microphone good enough to capture the sound? Um, Yes, it works if you're in a good room. So uh, especially if you're in a studio with a dry room or if you have a studio room which is giving you a nice room tone which you want on your track, um, then one microphone can work, but you have to keep a certain distance to the clarinet. So you can't put it close here or close here. That won't be a balanced sound. You have to give a little distance and then maybe check out a good angle where you capture the bell sound or the middle sound of the clarinet. So even a two, a two or three meters away from the clarinet could give you a nice balanced sound. It will give you a little more of the room tone on the other hand. So um, that works. The way I do it here in my woodwind room, if I'm recording clarinet in 99% of the times, I use a studio microphone, only one. Uh, I use a ribbon microphone. This is an AEA R84 Studio ribbon microphone. Uh, what I like about ribbon microphones specifically on clarinet is that the ribbons give you a warmer tone than maybe a large diaphragm condenser would give you. Um, because the ribbon characteristic already gives you like a slight roll off on the high frequencies and the or even on the high mid frequencies so it gives you a warmer tone which i think is good for the clarinet which has a warm tone anyway i don't need the overtones that a large diaphragm condenser might give you uh, so what i do i point this microphone to the middle or to a mixture between bell and middle of the clarinet and that works for me pretty good this is how this aa ribbon microphone sounds What you could do with such a ribbon microphone, you could open it up a little bit, giving it a little high mid boost. Uh, if you want to have a little more open sound, this is how it would sound. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, so um, when it comes to miking the clarinet in a situation where there is a drum set player next to you or a trumpet player or a loud PA system, so you will have spill on your microphone if you're far away from the clarinet, you might think, okay, I need to get closer to the clarinet with the microphone to capture more of the clarinet. And that's where the compromises start. So there is a quick and dirty version of miking the clarinet if you are on a live stage, uh, maybe not for studio recordings, but for just amplifying uh, the clarinet, maybe in a Dixieland band setup, or if you're playing with a rock and pop band, um, do you just take a dynamic microphone, like a 57, 58 or something like that, put it on a stand and put the clarinet bell close to it like this, not pointing into the microphone, but close from the side. This will give you a rather warm and indirect tone with not a lot of high frequencies, but maybe give you that warmth that a clarinet need, needs for a live situation. Um, quick and easy way to do, usually those microphones are on stage anyway, so check that out. Good quick and dirty version. Um, if you want to go a little more professional, um, you could use clip microphones. So there's a bunch of companies doing clip microphones like Shure, Sennheiser, DPA, SD Systems, Audio Technica, a lot of them. Um, most of them pretty good microphones, uh, but the problem is they m most of them only have one gooseneck. So uh, there's the compromise in itself. They've got one gooseneck pointing to only one sound source. Uh, but there is another company which is called AMT Applied Microphone Technologies. They build a double microphone specifically designed for clarinet. I won't open up this box now. I hate unboxing videos, but I'll be back in a second to show you the mic. So there we have it. This is the AMT WS double clarinet microphone system. We have a connection here with a screw to tighten it. It's very, very sturdy. It doesn't move at all, or just a little bit. Perfect. We have one microphone pointing at the bell, which can be moved in or out. So you can adjust the volume of the bell sound. So there's no preamp, no mixer, no knobs you have to turn. There's only two microphones and one cable. Uh, you have a second microphone which is pointing to the middle of your fingers, basically to your C finger, uh, which also can be adjusted using the gooseneck. Uh, getting closer to your C finger might give you a rather <sighs> airy tone, especially when your C finger is open. So you might get a little away from the clarinet. That'll give you a little warmer tone. Um, this is how it sounds. <laughs> Okay, so this was flat using no EQ at all. EQ at all. You might recognize that it had a little bit of uh, key work you, you heard on the recording, which uh, ca is caused because the clarinet is attached to the microphone. Um, but you can get rid of those if you use a low cut at around like 100 or 80 hertz. This is how it sounds with the low cut. <laughs> So, if you compare this audio sample with the audio sample of the AEA ribbon microphone, I think there's not much of a difference. So, if you're looking on your budget and thinking, well, only get one microphone maybe for both live and studio use, then the AMT, I think, is a very good option to have. Um, there is one thing, practically, having this microphone on the bottom and if you want to use a normal clarinet stand, 
it won't work. So even if you bend it out, still this thing is in the way and might get damaged. So you might get a clarinet stand which you can attach to your microphone, which is a little higher than the floor. Uh, this is not a critique, it's not a problem for me. Sound always comes first. Um, good microphone, definitely a good one. So if you are on a loud stage uh, with loud drums or a loud PA system, uh, you get spill on your clarinet channel because the clarinet is a quiet instrument which uses a lot of gain. So you'll amplify not only the clarinet but also the spill that you get on your channel. So I was uh, looking for ways of getting rid of the spill, especially when using any monitors because it was annoying to me. Um, and I found a solution. I found this one. This is a pickup system. It's a mixture of a piezo and a microphone, which uh, is produced by a German company called Rumberger Sound Products. And what they do is they drill a hole in your clarinet mouthpiece and put this preamp in. It's called the WP1X. Uh, so now if you're a classical clarinet player and you have your custom-made mouthpiece, your holy mouthpiece, then okay, I understand if you don't want to have a hole in your mouthpiece. Um, in my case, I'm a doubler, I don't have the perfect clarinet sound. Uh, I just ordered my mouthpiece again. I'm playing a Van Doren, so I can easily replace it. I just bought it online again, sent it over to the guys at Rumberger. They installed the pickup. It came back and actually I don't feel or hear a difference between the mouthpiece with or without the pickup. So in that situation, I don't care. It's just a plain mouthpiece with the pickup in there, no problems. So um, what this pickup gives you is a very, very direct, loud line level of your clarinet without capturing any spill at all because it captures the sound inside the mouthpiece, not outside like a microphone would do. This is how it sounds. So this sounds totally different than a microphone sounds. It's uh, very warm, very bassy, very direct. Maybe it lacks a bit of the air that a microphone would give you. So what I would do is I'd open, I try to open up the sound a bit using a high mid boost at like two, three, four, five kilohertz and add a little room to it. <laughs> So these are my ways of miking the clarinet. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, if you've got any questions to it or if you've got any topics that you would like me to make a video about woodwind related saxophone, studio, in-ear, all the stuff uh, a woodwind player might want to ask, uh, leave a comment below. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and I say bye bye.